So welcome to the Bug Bowl, Bacteriology Edition. And we're competing today for wonderful prizes. And let's go to some housekeeping matters for today. I'm, I've obtained all of the questions for, for today's session from this text. It's, it's very excellent. I suggest you check it out. So we're going to be uh, we're going to be answering a series of questions and uh, the person with the most candy at the end wins. You will be awarded candy for every correct point. There are some bonus questions at the end. So just to make sure that uh, everyone is up to speed, uh, we will have a test question to begin with. And as I said, you will have 30, quest 30 seconds to answer. Please write down your answer on the post-it note. And when the an correct answer is announced, show me and you will be rewarded with candy. So we have a test question to get everybody warmed up. And here's that test question. What is this? A, an Al-Qaeda weapon. B, a classified specimen from a 1950s alien autopsy. C, a newly described deep sea creature from the Marianas Trench. Pigs in a blanket, Piperonzicus. Or D, Pizza Hut's latest tasty creation, the Hot Dog Bites Pizza. You have 30 seconds. Please answer quickly. Give me your best guess. Just a few seconds remaining. Okay, the correct answer was D, but I would have also accepted A. Everybody get it? Okay, congratulations, here we go. Candy for everybody? Just pass them out, I'm sure everybody got that question, right? Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, now why is this important? One more piece of candy. Why is this important for the following as we discuss our prizes? Okay, so our, our, thir our runners up, if they don't already have them, will receive, and I have more than two, GOMPS ID Pearls 3.0. How many people have that? How many people have GOMPS ID Pearls 3.0? Okay, well, all runners up, um, while supply lasts, will receive GOMPS ID Pearls 3.0. The first runner up will receive an actual $15 Starbucks gift card. I will hand it to you. It is for real. We're not kidding around here. Now, for our grand prize winner, what's that? No, they don't. I'm sure they don't. No, but then again, why would you go there when you have the opportunity <laughs> to go to Starbucks? And for our grand prize winner, the reason why this is important is because you will actually get a chance to sample this pizza when it becomes on sale tomorrow because our first prize winner will win a $25 e-card to Pizza Hut sent directly to your email inbox. So we are not kidding around here. And by the way, you, you don't have to order that pizza if you find it disgusting. You can order something else. All right, so let's get to our first question, and here it is. Facultative anaerobes, A, cannot grow in the presence of oxygen, B, can switch chemical pathways depending upon the availability of oxygen, C, require high levels of CO2, or D, are strict aerobes. You have 30 seconds. Is it A, cannot grow in the presence of oxygen, or B, can switch chemical pathways depending upon the availability of oxygen? Do they require high levels of CO2, or are they strict aerobes? You have 10 seconds left. Answer quickly. Okay. And the correct answer is... B. Who got B? Raise your hand. Let's see B. Let's see B. 
Oh, yeah. Maybe if you maybe you can help out, that would be awesome. Okay. Who who else who else got it? Everybody got it. All right. We'll just pass those down. Multiple choice questions. Thank you for your help with that. I appreciate it. They are indeed on the boards. Okay. So. Just in case you were curious or if you didn't know, strict anaerobes cannot grow in the presence of O2. An example of that would be, of course, bacteroides. Capnophiles require high levels of CO2. An example would be Campylobacter. And obligate aerobes need O2 to survive. And an example of that is both nocardia and mycobacteria. So again, just to explain the other uh, portions of that question. So um, the more you know. All right. <laughs> Let's move on to our... <laughs> Let's move on to our... Wait a minute. I'm sorry. Sorry about that joke. I apologize. All right. So moving on to the... Let's get on to the next question. Thank you. Everybody wants us to go. Question number two. A 5% sheep's blood auger plate is an example of which media type? Is it A, enriched? B, nutritive, C, selective, or D, differential? And you have 30 seconds. Which of these media is an example of a 5% sheep's blood auger plate? Could it be differential? Is it enriched, nutritive, or selective? Are you waiting for me to break out the chocolate? You have five seconds. Okay, so let's see what our correct answer is. And the correct answer is nutritive. Okay, so show me, show, uh, show my lovely assistant, uh, Do Dr. V, um, who got it. And she will pass out the candy. Thank you for helping with that, by the way. So let's talk about um, different types of media. Only one person got it. Wow. <laughs> so enriched media. That's right. <laughs> enriched media contains specific nutrients required for growth of a particular organism. An example of that would be Thayer Martin for Neisseria. Nutritive media which is the correct answer, is supportive and it supports most non-fastidious organisms. So remember, a sheep's blood auger plate is one of the initial plates that, that uh, is plated out when a culture is sent to the lab. Selective media inhibits the growth of some organisms while allowing other groups to grow. An example of that would be McConkey for enterics, right? And then lastly, differential media contains a factor that can be used to distinguish certain characteristics um, an example would be XLD auger differentiating Salmonella shigella from other enterics. So the correct answer for sheep's blood auger is nutritive. Nutritive. Does everyone approve? Thank you very much. For those of you who got that question, congratulations. For those of you who didn't, my apologies. All right. So let's move on to the next question. An enzyme test useful in differentiating staphylococci from streptococci is, is it the urease test, the oxidase test, the catalase test, or the hyperate hydrolysis test? You have 30 seconds. Could it be urease? I just love doing this narration. Or could it be catalase? What is hyperate anyway? Who knows? But it could be the correct answer. Or could it be the oxidase test? Who knows? Who cares? Who cares? We care. You have five seconds. And our survey says the catalase test. The correct answer is C. Hold up your Post-it notes, if you got it correctly, you will get candy. Congratulations to all of you. There's a typo? Did I, did I make a typo? 
Calilays, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I should have, I could have held up a Jolly Rancher right there and that would have fixed it. So my apologies for that. The correct answer is Catalase. And for your information, just to go over the enzyme tests that, that uh, we were talking about, the catalase test, not the catalase test, catalyzes hydrogen peroxide with the release of water and oxygen, useful in the differentiation of staphylococci from strep. The oxidase test detects the presence of cytochrome oxidase, useful differentiating gram-negative bacteria, of course. The indole test, uh, we always talk about like indole positive proteus, for example, um, and it, it detects the presence of an end product in the degradation of tryptophan used in the presumption, presumptive identification of E. coli. And the urease test detects the presence of urease by hydrolysis of urea and is indicated by a pH and color change. And the PYR test detects the hydrolysis of the substrate l perolidonol b naphthylamide and used to differentiate streptococci. And hippurate hydrolysis detects the hydrolysis of the substrate hippurate and used in the identification of Campylobacter jejuni. So know your biochemical tests in the lab. Thank you all very much. Let's get on to the next question. Everything I say is funny. It's amazing. All right. <laughs> question number four. Greening colonies on a blood auger plate is referred to as A. Pitting B. Alpha hemolysis C. Beta hemolysis or D. Gamma hemolysis and you have 30 seconds. Is it pitting? I think you might see some few, a few pits on that uh, poorly re resolved photograph. Could it be alpha hemolysis? Could it be gamma hemolysis? Could, could it be delta hemolysis? No, it can't because that's not an option. You have s five seconds left. Answer carefully. Let's see what the correct answer in the survey says. Alpha hemolysis. Raise your hands if you got it. All right. <laughs> Wait a minute, what happened there? <laughs> All right. So let's remember the differences between the hemolysis types on the sheep auger plate, okay? Sheep blo sheep's blood auger, SBA plate. When alpha hemolysis is present, the auger under the colony is dark and greenish. You see it there. Strep pneumo and the group of oral streptococci, the viridins of streptococci, display alpha hemolysis. This is sometimes called green hemolysis because of the color change in the auger. Other synonymous terms are incomplete hemolysis and partial hemolysis. Um, alpha hemolysis is caused by hydrogen peroxide produced by the bacterium, oxidizing hemoglobin to green methemoglobin. Beta hemolysis is complete hemolysis. It's complete lysis of the red cells. The area appears yellow and transparent. The exotoxin produced by the bacteria is streptolysin. Strep pyogenes, or group A strep, displays beta hemolytic. Remember, we always talk about beta hemolytic strep. If an organism does not induce hemolysis, the auger under and around the colony is unchanged, and the organism is called non-hemolytic, or said to display gamma hemolysis. And we all know the most famous gamma hemolytic organism is Enterococcus faecalis, right? Or also known as group D streptococcus. All right, very good. For those of you who got it, for those of you who didn't, let's move on. Question number five. By the way, there are 15 questions, so all of you, so don't, don't feel like you're not gonna make it. Those of you who maybe are challenged, there's plenty more time to win. One test used to differentiate Staphylococcus aureus from Staphylococcus lugdunensis is A, PYR, B, catalase, C, bacitracin sensitivity, or D, novobiosin sensitivity, and you have 30 seconds. Now, those are, now I did spell catalase correct this time. 
Those of you may have noticed, I did go over catalase and PYR earlier. I did not go over bacitracin or novobiosin. You can judge that as you may. Could it be C? I haven't had a lot of Ds recently, so where is, where is Dr. Ayler putting the correct answer? Is it one of these letters? Is, could it be E? Okay, so the correct answer is Actually, hold up your hold uh, hold up your uh, hold up your answers. Hold up your answers. Okay, all right. The correct answer is A. Anybody put A? <laughs> hold up, hold up A if you got your A. Hold up, hold up A. Did anybody get it? Nobody got it. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. You know. I <laughs> so nobody got that one. Well, that was a tough one. I'm and we'll look at the film later, and we'll uh, we'll we'll see. We'll we'll look at the uh, we'll examine the video later for uh, for clarification. All right. Well, I'm so sorry, but these are not uh, cakewalk questions. You know, you got to know your micro. So. The correct answer to the PYR test, remember it's a rapid colometric method for presumptive identification of certain groups of bacteria based on the activity of the enzyme that I couldn't pronounce previously, but I tried. A positive test is seen with coagulase negative staphylococcus, specifically with hemolyticus lugdunensis and schlaffieri. So remember the PYR test as being vital to the identification of staph lugdunensis, which of course is a virulent form of coagulase negative staph. Very good. Okay, question number six. One way to differentiate Listeria from Bacillus species is the Gram reaction, the catalase reaction, motility, or spore formation. You have 30 seconds. Could it be motility? Could it be that... Um, that the Gram reaction is the way to differentiate the two. Could it be the catalase? No, I'm sorry, the catalase reaction, or could it be spore formation? Unfortunately, time is passing quickly, and you have five seconds. So, what's it going to be? All right, hold up your answers up in the air. Okay, and our, let's see what our correct answer is. And for this one, let's throw chocolate. The correct answer is D, spore formation. Who got D? Congratulations, three of you got D. Let's throw some chocolate. Don't eat your chocolate yet. That'll cause, unless you want to be, you know, you feel, you're feeling confident enough that you can spare one. And of course, we're referring to the tendency for bacillus to form spores, right? So what's a bacillus subspecies that forms spores that we know about? Well, actually, all of them do, but we're thinking about Bacillus anthracis, right? Anthrax and the idea of spores. In fact, Bacillus spores are so hardy and durable that it's been estimated that they can survive in outer space conditions for hundreds of years. Or maybe I've just been watching the movie Prometheus too much, which is a great movie if you've seen that. All right, so the more you know. Moving on to question number seven. And let's throw chocolate again. Carriers of salmonella har harbor the organism in their A colon, B gallbladder, C small intestine, D appendix, or E pancreas. And you have 30 seconds. Again, salmonella, I think it's fair to say, is found in the colon. Can the gallbladder be a source? It is a confined space. The small intestine, you know, that connects to both of them, I, at least I've heard. The appendix, you're always, people are always getting in trouble with their appendix. And the pancreas, you know, I think that's what they put in sweetbreads, but I'm not sure. Have you ever had sweetbreads before? Yeah, are they good? I don't know. All right, so let's see what the correct answer is. Hold up your, hold up your, your selection. I see Bs. I see Ds. I see a lot of Bs. I see A's. <laughs> The correct answer is 
The gallbladder. Who put the gallbladder? Raise up. Let's give out some chocolate. By the way, do you know that uh, eating chocolate's been associated with salmonella gallbladder? So, yeah, so be, be careful. You know, maybe you want to hold on to those or give them away. So, no, that's just a joke. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just joking. Uh, thank you. Thank you, sound effects, for laughing at my joke. All right, so let's move on to question number eight. Oh, actually, this is a factoid. Do you know that an estimated one one hundredth of all shell eggs contains salmonella enteritidis? And that's why, of course, they tell you to make sure that you don't eat raw cookie batter and you, you cook your eggs till they're well done and you don't eat them sunny side down or up. Uh, up, yeah. up, I'm sorry. Easy one. Yeah, exa over easy, exactly. Those are some nice looking eggs. All right. Question number eight. TCBS stands for the Columbia Broadcasting System, a television network. Nobody watches TV anymore, so that was kind of a uh, thiosulfate citrate bile salt, a differential media. C, a selective auger for vibrio isolation. Or D, the country's best yogurt. Now, this was a freebie because the country's best yogurt is actually TCBY. It's not TCBS. So um, if you select that, you can try to select that, but it's probably not correct. All right, you have 30 seconds. Sorry about that. I felt bad. I wanted I wanted all of you to get some chocolate. So, all right. So, d we have tw we have fifteen seconds. Choose carefully. Who's hungry for yogurt now? I know I am. We have five sec actually ten seconds. Five seconds. You have the look of confidence, Jane. I just see it in your eyes. You know this one. <laughs> All right, so hold up your answers. I see a B, I see a B, I see a B. So everybody selected B. Let's see what the correct answer is. The correct answer is actually C. Sorry, everyone. Sorry. So why is that the correct answer? This was a little bit of a trick question, okay? So... TCBS does stand for thiosulfate citrate bile salt, but it is not a differential media. It is a selective media. Specifically, it selects out a particular organism, Vibrio. So, um, and because none of, you s none of you selected D and everybody selected the wrong answer, I'm giving everybody a piece of chocolate. Oh. Please, <laughs> give them out. I felt bad. Everybody wins. Everybody wins. Everybody yeah. wins. <laughs> as long as everybody wins, nobody loses, right? That's, that's what I like to say. All right. So my apologies. I just had to stick that one in. All right. Speaking of food, question number nine. An identifying characteristic, characteristic of this bacterial genus is a Frito-like odor. A Frito-like odor. Which of these organisms is associated with the odor of Fritos? Is it A, Pasteurella, B, Proteus, C, Prevotella, or D, Providentia? You have 30 seconds. How many people like Fritos? How many people will not be eating Fritos any longer? This is the reason why, like sometimes if your socks have been in a very confined place for a while and you pull them out they smell a little Frito like um, it's because of this bacterial organism so is it uh, Providentia, Pasteurella, Prevotella, Proteus or is it uh, none of the above it's not none of the above because E is not a selection alright so let's hold up our cards I see several D, C, I se see several C's I see a couple B's, I see an A so we're really all over the map here Okay, so let's see what the correct answer is. The correct answer is B, Proteus. I think we have two winners. Jane and the young lady down there. What is your name again? Ronan. What is it again? Ronan. Ronan. And Jane and Ronan. Very nice to meet you, Ronan. Congratulations. So this, this, 
answering this this question got me kind of fascinated with other bacteria that are associated with different food odors. So I, I tried to collect a compendium of those, and here they are. So salmonella is said to smell of chicken broth. Now, I don't know if that's because salmonella likes chickens, and, you know, it looks kind of brothy, but yet it is. Brown butter is said to have the odor of uh, Streptococcus milleri. Morning breath is oral anaerobes. Grapes, of course, we associate with Pseudomonas aeruginosa. And the rich earth smell that you smell sometimes, like if you get potting soil, is associated with both cyanobacteria and actin actinomycetes. Actinomycetes. Remember, that's not actinomyces. It's actinomycetes. That's a different bacteria. So um, how many people are, are hungry right now? Um, yeah, I know. I'm sorry I ruined your appetite. But hey, you got chocolate. So what can you complain about? All right, moving on here to question number 10. Remember, there's only, after this one, there's only five more questions plus some bonus questions. Members of the M. tuberculosis complex include A. M. bovis, B. M. leprae, C. M. cadzaceae, D. M. avium, E. M. africanum, F. A. and B, and G. A. and E. You have 30 seconds. Okay. So we know that the M. tuberculosis complex includes several different organisms. And which ones are they? Now, I did throw in some uh, multiple choice or some multiple answer options just to confound things. So uh, be advised and govern yourselves accordingly. You have three seconds. Choose carefully. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, let's hold up our cards. I see some, I see, uh, oh, wow, this was a, quite a uh, panoply of different selections. I see a D, I see Fs, I see a G, I see Gs. And how about you down there? Did I? F, okay. So which one can it be? Let's see, could it be, could it be A? Is it A? Well, it could be A, right? Because what are the, um, what are, just anybody name a, a member of the MTB complex. Just throw it out. Bovis, right? So Bovis is one, right? Okay. Now, is that the only one? Is there a, what's another one? M. tuberculosis, right? <laughs> That's an easy one, right? Okay, so the correct answer is G. Hold up your cards. Who had G? Just two of you. That's a definite chocolate answer. Very good. <coughs> Congratulations to you all. For those of you who didn't get it, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <coughs> so just, just out, of, out of interest, um, tuberculosis has been around for a long time. It's been found in Neolithic sites that are 4,000 years old. Um, TB and leprosy were well recognized in the oldest civilizations from China, Egypt, and India. Leprosy appears to have originated in the Near East or Africa area and spread within with human immigrants to the Americas in the last 500 years. I don't know if that's actually correct because I think that there are, th in the pre-Columbian era, um, they've, they've actually found tuberculosis. It, it was, it, this was a misnomer, so I'm sorry for spreading that falsehood. But um, this is a Egyptian mummy. Um, I'm not sure if it was someone's mummy, but it was a mummy. So, um, and this, pr this uh, mummy is an example of where tuberculosis was found in, um, uh, you know, thank you, in, uh, in mummies. So <coughs> I'm very bad with historic periods. But did you know that the, the, the movie Jurassic World is actually inaccurate because a lot of those dinosaurs were, were actually not from the Jurassic period. It's true. So I hope I just didn't you know, insert a spoiler there that will uh, 
kill your enjoyment of the movie. All right, well, let's move on here. We have a couple more. A nonspecific serologic test that used to be popular in diagnosing mycoplasma pneumonia infection is. Is it the cold agglutinin assay, the PCR, immunoblotting, or indirect immunofluorescence? You have 30 seconds. So mycoplasma pneumonia, of course, very uh, difficult to diagnose, but very common in the population. So how did we used to diagnose mycoplasma infection? And again, we said this was a nonspecific test. And you have five seconds, so answer carefully. <coughs> I, noticed that, I noticed Jane is uh, looking at her phone. I don't know if she's just checking email or <coughs> what's going on there. <laughs> I'm not making any accusations. Uh, <laughs> all right, so let's hold up your cards. We have uh, a couple A's and a C in the background. Okay, so the correct answer is A. Congratulations to those of you who got that answer correct. <coughs> now remember the cold agglutinin test used to be done as a diagnostic test for MT, for excuse me, for mycoplasma. And the reason why it was no longer done, it was, it, it was very nonspecific. It was also rather labor intensive. So nowadays, the cold agglutinin test has now been replaced by PCR-based assays for the diagnosis of mycoplasma pneumonia infection. So we have a lot more effective and more specific diagnostic testing. And so the cold agglutinin test has sort of fallen by the, the wayside. So... My apologies to the cold agglutinin test. You can't order it here, even if you know you do and it's canceled. You'll know why, because it's not not done. All right. Not that that's yeah specific to that particular test. All right. Question number twelve. Remember, we have a couple of bonus questions, so don't feel down. There's still plenty of time for someone to leap forward and take this prize. Routine culture media for sputum specimens should include the following auger types. Or those of you who work in the micro lab, is it 5% sheep's blood, colistin and nalodixic acid? Is it 5% sheep's blood, McConkey and chocolate? Is it 5% sheep's blood, McConkey and mannitol salts? Is it 5% sheep's blood, McConkey and Sabaraud's heart infusion? And you have 30 seconds. So which of these routine media is used for sputum specimens specifically for sputum specimens think about which one of which ones of these if you collect a sputum specimen and you take it down to the lab the lab will automatically plate it out on these different plates so I know that we don't often get down to the micro lab but several of you have been down there so all right so which one of these is it Hold up your answers, and I will now reveal. I see some C's. What the heck is that? <laughs> <C. laughs> okay, it's a B. I see a B. B's, C's, C's, and then what did you? What did you hold up? Let's see. Okay, and the correct answer is the correct answer is B. Who got it? Hold up your hold up your B's. Let's give out some chocolate. Congratulations to those of you who got who got the B answer. I'm seeing some, uh, I'm definitely seeing some uh, hypoglycemic reactions in some of your futures, <laughs> well, if you eat all of these at once. And uh, by the way, don't go swimming at least 30 minutes after eating your chocolate. I'm, I'm just telling you, it's, a, it's what my mom always used to tell me. Okay, so the correct answer is B, and so sheep's blood, McConkey, and chocolate auger, of course, McConkey is the uh, plate for differentiating gram negatives, and chocolate auger is used for growing fastidious respiratory bacteria such as H. flu and Neisseria meningitidis. And uh, um, I know that very soon those of you who have plenty of chocolate will be looking like Homer Simpson. So, yeah. Thank you very much. I, I, I said uh, Homer, Homer Simpson. Thank you very much. Okay. 
All right, so question number 13, lucky 13, because some of you may get this and pull ahead. The questions do get harder with time. We have to differentiate out those of you who are going to ultimately be our victors. The best culture medium for isolation of Bordetella pertussis is A, B, C, or D. Now, you may recognize D because we just saw it, right? So that's chocolate auger. So A, B, and C, what are they? Do you want to answer this question just like this, or do you want labels? Do you want labels? Labels? Okay. There's your labels. So, uh, and that one's chocolate. I didn't label that one, but it's chocolate auger. So it's cysteine telluride chocolate, Reagan Lowe, Thayer Martin, or regular chocolate. So the best culture medium for the isolation of Bordetella pertussis. Which one is it? You may be guessing in this one because it is, it is difficult. But again, you've got to know your media in, in our field. And so which of these does one isolate Bordetella pertussis? So we have five more seconds. What is it going to be? Okay, hold up your answers. We have uh, B, C, I see an A. Wow, we're all over the map. Nobody selected D. So, um, all right, just uh, hold them up one more time. I want to see who's... Okay, all right, very good, very good. Okay, well, the correct answer is... It's actually B, Reagan Low Media. The basal medium of Reagan Low Auger consists of charcoal auger supplemented with defibrinated horse blood. Okay, so feeling bad about that one because very few of you got it. By the way, congratulations to those of you who got it. To those of you who didn't, I'm very sorry. But um, here's a bonus question. Regan, Regan Low Media has replaced what other media for the isolation of Bordetella? Now, this will require an answer, so does, any, does anyone verbally know? Excellent. Congratulations. That was correct. Give her, and give her an extra chocolate. Let's, I'll slide that down there. There you go. Congratulations. Wow, I'm impressed. That is correct. It's Bordet Ganju Media, and there it is. So that's been replaced by the What time is it? They have a 12 o'clock meeting? Yeah. We're almost done. Okay. okay, just five more minutes. Okay, so board at Ganju Media. And actually, that was worth three points. So you get two extra. Congratulations. All right. Okay. So question number 14, we have two more questions. A urinary pathogen that's been associated with kidney stone formation is A, Proteus species, B, Candida, C, Citrobacter, D, E. coli, or E, A, and C. And I'm going to give you all 10 seconds because yeah. we're, we're running out of time. Okay, so which one of these has been associated? Hold up your answers. I see, an, is that an E? Yeah. Okay, an E, A, A, E, A, E, 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 A, E, I, E, I, E, I, O. Um, so the correct answer is, it's actually A. The correct answer is A. So Proteus species has been associated with kidney stone formation. Congratulations. And um, so bonus question, three points for this one. What type of urinary stone is most often associated with urea splitters? Is it A, cal calcium oxalate? B, uric acid, C, struvite, or D, cysteine. So you have 10 seconds. Which one of these is associated with urea splitters? Which one? Three points. Okay, hold up your answer. I see a couple, of an A, a B, a B, a C, and three, four Cs. Okay, the correct answer is is C. Congratulations. So these four got it. So give them each three pieces of candy. 
Urea splitting organisms produce urease, which hydrolyzes urea to ammonia, producing alkaline urine, which precip pre precipitates the struvite crystals. Okay, so it's time for our last question. And actually, um, it's a goodie. Okay, this is worth five points and may determine our winners. One of the following 12 organisms is not a report reportable illness in Florida. Which one is it? And I'm going to give you one of these is not a reportable illness, and you get five points. So we have, I'm giving you 30 seconds on this. How many seconds? 30. You have 20 seconds. Huh? I'm sorry, I would have given you 60 seconds, but we're almost out of time. Okay, let's see your answers, please. I see an H, an L, a B, an I, an E, an F, and a K. So the correct answer is B. Congratulations to Amanda. So she gets five pieces of candy. Wow, see what I mean about you leaping ahead. All right, so now that's, th that's our last question. Um, this is actually a bug bowl. It keeps uh, bugs out of your pet's bowl.